Congruence, Lesson 7.2. This standard is 8G2. The objective is to write congruent statements for congruent figures. The essential question is how can you determine congruence and similarity? When writing angles, we want to trace them with our finger. So for example, angle QTS would be QTS. And we would be talking about this angle here. Now, for angle RSQ, we would trace with our finger R, S, Q. And we would be talking about this angle here. Now, the reason why we don't want to just say angle S is because we could be talking about this angle here, or we could be talking about this angle here. If two figures are congruent, their corresponding sides are congruent, and their corresponding angles are congruent. So if we're talking about side AB and side DE, they are congruent because they both have one dash. Now side CA and side FD are congruent because they have three dashes. Now if we're talking about angles, angle A and angle D are congruent because they both have one arc. And if we look at the outside, angle C and angle F are congruent because they have two arcs. So remember, this symbol here means congruent. That's the geometry symbol for equals. Example number one. Write congruent statements comparing the corresponding parts in the congruent quadrilaterals shown. So first we're going to start with angles. So we'll start with angle M. So angle M is congruent to angle A. And the reason why is because they both have one arc. Now let's move on to angle P. Angle P is congruent to angle S, but it's also congruent to angle K. However, it looks like the figures have been reflected, so the corresponding angle would be angle S. Now angle O. Angle O would be congruent to angle K. And then the last angle would be angle N. And that one would be congruent to angle B. Now let's look at the sides. So we'll start with side MP. And the line above means side. So side MP is congruent to side AS. And that's because they have one dash each. Now side PO is congruent to SK. And it's congruent to SK because they both have two dashes. Now side ON is congruent to side KB. And the reason why they're congruent is because they both have three dashes. Now the last side is side NM. And side NM is congruent to side BA. And the reason why is because they both have four dashes. Example number two, parallelogram XWYZ is congruent to parallelogram LKMN. Write congruent statements comparing the corresponding parts, then determine which transformations map parallelogram WXYZ onto parallelogram KLMN. Now it looks like it's been reflected over the x-axis, then translated left. So we're gonna start with our angles. Now I'm going to tell you that angle X is congruent to angle L. So they will both receive one arc. Now angle W is congruent to angle K. They will both receive two arcs. Now angle Y is congruent 
to angle M. They will both receive three arcs. And then angle Z is congruent to angle N. And they will both receive an arc and a dash. Now let's look at our sides. So if I look at side X, Y, X and Y correspond to angles L and M. So they should be congruent to side LM. If I look at side YZ, YZ would be congruent to side MN. If I look at side ZW, ZW is congruent to side NK. If I look at side WX, WX is congruent to side KL. So the last thing we have to do is to determine our transformation. So I know that we reflected over the x-axis then translated left five units example number three Miley is using a brace to support a tabletop. In the figure, triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DFG. If the measure of angle CEB equals 50 degrees, what is the measure of angle FGD? So first, let's find CEB. They said CEB equals 50 degrees. Now let's find FGD. Since they've been reflected and are congruent, angle FGD equals 50 degrees. Example number four. From the previous figure, the length of CE is two feet. What is the length of FG? So they're saying that CE equals two feet. Since they're congruent, FG is also two feet. So I can say that FG equals two feet. 